I don't know if you guys have been following the Frankie Hildebrandt case, but yesterday, Ruby Frankie's oldest son answered a bunch of questions over on his Twitch account. I've noticed some similarities between the Frankies and the Browns in the past. And what struck me yesterday as Chad was answering these questions is that no matter how abysmal we view these parents, the kids really don't completely write their parents off. The majority of Cody's children view Robin as the problem. She is the reason they don't have a relationship with their dad. Now, Cody has gone to great lengths on Sister Wives to refute this, to claim ownership of the rules and the distance he's put between himself and his children. I do think Cody is ultimately responsible for the relationship that he has with his kids, but I do not believe that he was the one behind the rules, not for one second. From listening to Chad's live stream yesterday, it occurred to me that not all hope is lost for Cody. I really do think he does have a chance to have a relationship with his children if he comes out of the delusions he's been living in the last several years. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. Before we jump into today's video topic, let's hear from this video sponsor. I am so excited to be partnering again with June's Journey. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game with a captivating detective story. As you guys know, I am a busy lady. I have two kids, I work a full-time job, I do the youtube -y things, and I'm also newly on a weight loss journey. I take a lot on. This game is the perfect way to unwind after a busy day. Some free self-care that I can do in pajamas and doesn't require me leaving the comfort of my couch is right up my alley. June's journey takes you back to the glamour of the 1920s. Each new scene takes you further through a thrilling murder mystery story as June Parker sets out to solve the murder of her sister. June is known for getting herself into tricky situations, so tag along as she solves her problems in her own witty ways. Download June's Journey for free by clicking the link below in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen. June's Journey is available on Android and iOS mobile devices as well as on your PC through Facebook games. Thank you June's Journey for sponsoring this video. I think the Frankie Hildebrandt case is mainstream enough news, but on the off chance that you haven't heard of it, let's go through a brief rundown of what happened. So Ruby Frankie is this LDS mom of six who amassed a subscriber count of over 2 million on her family vlog channel called 8 passengers. She actually comes from an entire family of family YouTube vloggers as her parents, as well as some of her sisters, have successful YouTube channels as well. Ruby Frankie is slash was married to a man named Kevin and together they have six children. Sherry and Chad are the oldest and they are both adults now. On the eight passengers YouTube channel, it was clear that Ruby ruled the roost. Kevin pretty much went along with how Ruby wanted to parent and how much of their personal lives they shared with their followers. I think it was around 2020 concerns started to grow about some of the discipline that viewers were witnessing on this channel. From videos I've seen, at one point Ruby threatened to cut the head off of a stuffed animal in front of her youngest daughter. Another time, Ruby bragged about refusing to bring a lunch to school for that same daughter who was only six years old at the time. I guess all the kids were responsible for packing their own lunches. And since she forgot, she just had to lump it no matter if it made the teacher uncomfortable to see a child go hungry. And something that really set social media on fire was when it was revealed that her oldest son, Chad, got his bedroom taken away as a punishment and he had been sleeping on a beanbag chair for like six or seven months. What horrified viewers was Ruby using life-sustaining necessities like food and shelter, things as parents we actually are legally required to provide our children, 
and she was using these as disciplinary tools. Viewers' concern ramped up even more when Kevin and Ruby announced that their oldest son, Chad, was sent off to one of those behavioral camps for troubled kids. I guess it was around this time that Jody Hildebrandt entered into the Frankie family's lives. She entered the picture as Chad's therapist. I think Jody Hildebrandt could best be described as a monster. She has a track record of destroying marriages and destroying families. She is slash was a therapist endorsed by the LDS church. I'm pretty sure at this point she has been stripped of her license, but she weaseled her way into this family, got her hooks into Ruby, who clearly already had a predilection to take discipline to the extreme. Ruby Frankie ends up abandoning her very profitable eight passengers YouTube channel to work on this self-help program called Connections with Jody. They filmed all of their videos from Jody's basement in her home in Ivan's, Utah. Nobody really saw her husband anymore or her kids for that matter. Yet Ruby and Jody continue to preach to their followers on how to be a better parent, a better spouse, and just overall a better person. To everyone's horror, Jody and Ruby were arrested on horrific allegations of child abuse and neglect. I'll spare you the details here because it really is one of the worst cases of child abuse that I have ever heard about. It is absolutely heartbreaking to hear about what Ruby Frankie's two youngest kids endured for months. Jody and Ruby both pled guilty and they've been sentenced to at least four years in prison each. The sentencing is weird. The state of Utah has an indeterminate sentencing thing, so they could get up to 30 years, but they will be there for at least four. And I guess the parole board will determine when they get out of prison. Some details that came out during the investigation and Chad actually actually shed some light on during his Twitch stream was that it had been at least a year prior to Ruby and Jody's arrest when Kevin and Chad were kicked out of the family's home. Chad just revealed during this Twitch stream that they were kicked out on the same day and left in the same car. I've been following this case since the arrest and I just could never wrap my mind around how could Kevin, a father, just abandon his kids? Well, in his Twitch stream, Chad claims that both he and his dad were brainwashed. So much so that early on, it came out that Kevin initially tried to have his oldest child, Sherry, arrested after Ruby and Jody's arrest. Kevin Frankie apparently went back to the home and realized several electronic items were removed from the home and he immediately called police. He told police that he believed Sherry had broken down the front door and thought that she had stolen the electronic items based on something she had said in court that day. Of course, Sherry did not break down the door. The police broke down the door the day before when they were searching the home for the children. The thing Kevin was most concerned that Sherry had taken apparently was some journals and electronic journals. He told the police none of the children were welcome in the home, especially Sherry, and that he wanted her charged with burglary. The police explained that Sherry was in the home to collect items for the children. The officer told Kevin that they would not be filing charges against Sherry and that this was a civil issue if he had an issue with it. Kevin advised him that he was going to sue the police department as he was displeased with the answer that he got. Kevin's lawyer, of course, did give a brief statement to the news and he said, Kevin didn't do either. He and Sherry are working together on bygones and resuming a loving and healthy father-daughter relationship. Kevin is still trying to understand and correct the upside down world that was dealt him. It's a lot to deal with at once. Chad shed some light on this during his stream. And here we have a lovely Redditor that summed up this part of the Q&A. So someone asked Chad, Kevin said he wanted to press charges against Sherry for breaking into his home. Don't you think that was kind of messed up? And Chad's answer was, I don't think people realize how complicated everything was. We painted Sherry as a bad guy because we thought she was trying to frame mom for something she didn't do. What Sherry did at first was technically burglary. You can't take personal items from a home. We were already upset that she posted on Instagram saying, we finally got you. But then after a day, they talked about it and everything was fine. Chad says that he and Sherry both have a good relationship with Kevin now. They also are still very much dedicated to their faith and they don't blame their church for what happened. 
They very much view Jody as a psychopath who led Ruby down a really dark path. Personally, I don't necessarily agree with that since there's so much empirical evidence of her parenting style prior to her meeting Jody. But that's when this thought occurred to me that a lot of kids may never completely write off a parent. In reference to Ruby, Chad didn't completely write off a future relationship with her, but did say that Ruby was giving him space at this time. And I think that that is wise. I am honestly kind of shocked that after everything Chad has gone through, that he initially was against his sister, who was just trying to save everyone. Kevin and Chad viewed her as the enemy, a truly incomprehensible. Chad seems to have a level head on his shoulders and he is in therapy. So I do hope this family gets the help they need to put the pieces of their family back together. If you guys have followed the Frankie Hildebrand story, I mean, it doesn't get a lot worse than that as far as being mistreated by your parents. And yet here we have Chad saying that he and Sherry are holding space in their hearts to have a relationship with their dad. And Chad says for him, possibly a relationship with his mom in way down the line in the distant future. He did say during his stream that he thinks his mom needs to remain incarcerated until his youngest sibling is 18 years old. But this really got me thinking about the Brown kids who are mostly now adults and what has become of the family and their relationship with their dad, Cody. Is it possible for Cody to have a future relationship with his children? I think the answer is yes, but I think that would only ever happen if Robin was no longer part of the equation. Meaning if Cody and Robin one day divorce, it's entirely possible Cody could rekindle a relationship with the majority of his children. I have infamously copped to being a fan of Cody's for like the first four seasons or so of the show. I've talked about this in my live streams all the time. In those early years, he came off as this earnest guy who was really proud of his family. He really wanted to fight for the right to structure his family the way he wanted to, albeit unconventionally. And I felt like it was obvious that his kids absolutely adored him. And really, one of the biggest things I noticed about Cody in those very early seasons was that he seemed to relate better to his sons more than his daughters. I actually think the anthropology students brought this up in season eight. What I don't recall were any of the older kids stating that they felt like a certain mom's kids got preferential treatment. Another thing that was obvious in those early seasons is that the Brown kids knew their dad. They knew what made sense for him behavior wise. And they also had come to know their dad's newest wife, Robin, who the majority majority of his kids had come to view as manipulative. They have said as much on and off the show. Was this an entirely fair observation? I mean, I'm sure Robin faced an uphill battle in the beginning, but I think that the OG3 and the OG13 caught on to Robin's ways pretty early on. Robin is very much a win at all costs type of person. She is not going to go without a meal, a house or a shopping trip to David Yerman, no matter whose coffers she is taking funds out of. Who the biggest villain in the Brown family is open to interpretation. I don't think there's a wrong answer, but in my opinion, this family would look a lot different if Robin never entered the picture. And I've said this before, in my viewpoint, Cody is a follower and he is susceptible to manipulation, but this does not alleviate Cody of responsibility for his actions. Rather, I think what we have witnessed is a methodical manipulation of Cody by Robin over the course of many years. And I know that we are talking about Mormon fundamental polygamy, where by its very nature, the lifestyle is incredibly misogynistic and oppressive to women. But that doesn't mean that a woman can't weasel her way up the ranks of a family or a belief system to obtain a level of power that is dangerous given said person's motives. Hello, Jody Hildebrandt. And I know Jody Hildebrandt wasn't a Mormon fundamentalist. Whether or not we agree that Robin is the source of all of the family's problems, it seems pretty clear that Cody's children are of the opinion that she is the source of all of the family's problems. Gabe knew what was up early on in the pandemic when Janelle was trying to mediate the tension between her kids and their dad. So is it Robin or is it dad? I think it's dad. 
he's he's an independent decision maker. Yeah, he's also a freedom lover. And you this know? isn't very free of him. <laughs> Gabe knows his dad. To him, this sounds like his dad's brain has been abducted by aliens because this is so out of character of him. And Janelle, bless her heart, is just trying to keep all sides happy. But the kids are not seeing their dad and they think that that's bullshit. They're adults at this point. Shit, their brother Hunter, who is in nursing school at this time, is even trying to reason with their dad as to what are actually helpful protocols to follow, but nothing is working. Somehow, only total alienation of his family seems to be the remedy to keep himself safe from COVID. But as we know, Cody and the McMansion contracts it anyways, and not from any of his disloyal kids, but from one living inside the McMansion itself. As Gabe called out, this was never about COVID in the first place. And then the kids gather for that dinner at Garrison's, and we see what their viewpoint of Robin's behavior is. Just a heads up, this clip does prominently feature Garrison as this dinner took place at his house. I am including this clip because what is said here is important to the topic of this video. Robin turned it into us trying to ostracize her and played the victim. She, she, she was, was gaslighting everyone into treating was, her with uh, special treatment. Because, because of the past like eight years, she's made herself the victim. She, she is the catalyst of all this of using COVID to make that exclusive and then turning herself into the victim and saying that it's our fault. She no longer could feel the victim because she can no longer feel us attacking her because we just gave up, we didn't care about her anymore. And Robin's mad that she can't have this effect on her lives anymore. We I would like to, to be... say that I didn't care, yeah. but it still hurts. This is a really hard clip to watch. Gwen, I think, sums it up accurately. She says, I'd like to say that I don't care, but it still hurts. Robin is not these kids' mom. They view her as a reason why they don't have a relationship with their dad. I think that that's pretty accurate, but I also acknowledge Cody is a whole-ass autonomous adult that should know better and should do better. This doesn't absolve him from culpability. Chad Frankie in his live stream discussed how crazy it is for him to reconcile the fact that he feels he had been brainwashed. It seems like Kevin Frankie is going through the same crisis of conscience. Kevin has filed for divorce from Ruby and he's suing Jody. And Chad reports that his dad totally denounces that worldview. It seems like Chad and Sherry, the two oldest Frankie children, are giving their dad the space and the opportunity to make things right. I really believe that if Cody and Robin got divorced, which I think is entirely possible because I don't think Robin is going to stick around if money starts to become a contentious topic in their household. I think it's entirely possible that at least some of Cody's kids would be receptive to granting Cody the space to make things up to them. But two big caveats here that I'm not 100% sure Cody is capable of. Cody would have to take accountability to his children and he would have to admit to allowing himself to be manipulated. I hope for this family's sake that they do move towards a path of healing, but Cody would have to make some pretty big life changes. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to check out my second channel, Sarah Spills. A link for that will be in the description of this video. Follow me on Instagram, Threads, and X at Reality Squad, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.